the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, President speaks on debt restructuring plans at the Parliament but leads to postponement of Parliament debate following criticism and leaders' death. LP gas prices see fluctuations in the market as Litro Gas announced price drops. Laughs Gas holds steady. I am pleased to inform you that Litro Gas Lanka Limited will be reducing the price of its domestic cylinders effectively, effective midnight today as follows. Stock market turns the tables and ends the negative trend, marking a day with significant gains. And as the UK prepares for elections, Conservatives face a challenge from tax-friendly Labour led by Keir Starmer after 14 years in power. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayadune. Good evening and thank you for joining us. President Ranil Wickremesinghe has said to the parliament today that Sri Lanka will make interest in saving $5 billion on the restructured bilateral debt and the interest rates on loans will be 2.1% or below. He further stated that Sri Lanka has been given extra eight years to repay the loans till 2043 under the agreement and that it will help improve the debt repay capacity in the future. Speaking at the parliament, he said that talks with bondholders to restructure $12.5 billion worth of debt is progressing well and a conclusion is expected soon. Full disclosures will be made after a deal with bondholders are reached. Though he wanted to disclose the agreements in parliament, there has been a request from the official creditor committee to delay it till the new government is formed in France. The president informed parliament that Sri Lanka's foreign debt totals to 37 billion US dollars. This includes 10.6 billion US dollars in bilateral debt, 11.7 billion dollars in multilateral debt, 14.7 billion in commercial debt and 12.5 billion in sovereign bonds. He added that the debt rework which is underpinned by a 2.9 billion dollar international monetary fund program gives Sri Lanka a chance to restore its debt sustainability and use save funds to improve public services, increase reserves and reduce domestic interest rates. Meanwhile, the government has cancelled the two-day parliament debate on the recently concluded bilateral debt restructuring after the opposition criticised the restructuring deal are far from over and death of a former opposition leader. The debate was scheduled for today and tomorrow while a vote on the debt restructuring deal was to be held at the end of the debate tomorrow. Speaker of Parliament Mahinda Yapape Vardhana informed the House the determination of the Supreme Court concerning the bill titled Economic Transformation. The Supreme Court, acting under Article 12.1 of the Constitution, reviewed the bill and proposed a series of amendments to ensure its alignment with constitutional principles. The recent cabinet meeting yesterday resulted in a series of impactful decisions aimed at promoting economic and social development in the country. The initiatives include significant measures to boost the micro, small and medium business sector along with advancements across various other sectors. Firstly, the cabinet focused on empowering women in the micro, small and medium business sector. Noting that women's participation in economic activities in Sri Lanka lags behind other Asian countries, the cabinet approved a special loan scheme to remove financial obstacles for women entrepreneurs. Another important decision involved the textile and apparel industry as the cabinet approved a project agreement between the Swiss State Secretariat for Economic Affairs and Sri Lanka's Export Development Board for a second phase of the Global Textile and Apparel Program. Program. Moreover, the cabinet addressed youth empowerment through the National Youth Service Council. In terms of economic development, the cabinet reviewed orders under the Colombo Port City Economic Commission Act. These orders involving designations of secondary businesses of strategic importance and proposed incentives are said to be tabled in Parliament for approval. The strategic move aims to attract investment and bolster economic activities within the port city, fostering growth and development in the region. In summary, the Cabinet's decisions on the 1st of July reflect a comprehensive approach to addressing economic empowerment, infrastructural development, industry transformation, youth empowerment, strategic economic initiatives and justice reforms. Meanwhile, Cabinet spokesperson Bandhul Gunavardhana said that Sri Lanka has appointed a committee to look into renegotiating all cancelled projects with bilateral loans after the last week debt restructuring deal. The country reached 10 billion US dollars of debt restructuring deals with the members of the Paris Club and China last week and President Ranil Wickremesinghe announced the success in the bilateral loans after the deal was signed. 
A statement from the State Information Office said that Sri Lanka's cabinet of ministers have also approved the borrowing of 100 million US dollars from the Asian Development Bank. The statement said the loan is the first part of a 300 million dollar program. Energy Minister Kanchana Vijay Sekara said that the cabinet has approved new feed-in tariffs for renewable power plants below 10 megawatts. Rooftop solar below 500 kilowatts will be paid a flat rate of 27 rupees and 6 cents a unit for 20 years. Over 500 kilowatts will be 23 rupees and 18 cents. Chairman of state-run Litro Gas, Mudita Piris, announced that the prices of Litro domestic LP gas cylinders has been reduced with effect from midnight today. I am pleased to inform you that Litro Gas Lanka Limited will be reducing the price of its domestic cylinders effectively, effective midnight today as follows. 12.5 cylinder, the main cylinder, the Colombo base price would be, the current price is 3,790, reduction be 100 rupees and the new price will be 3690 rupees and also the 5 kg cylinder current price is 1522 rupees and the reduction would be 40 rupees and the new price will be 1482 and the smallest cylinder 2.3 712 uh, the current price be reduced by 18 rupees and 694 will be the new uh, price after midnight tonight. Even though the global market prices are in the upward trend, the company decided to uh, give a relief to its consumers based on structural cost reduction initiatives and efficient stock management. Thank you very much. Let's go for a short commercial break. More updates coming right after this. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. It's good news from the Colombo Stock Exchange as it marked a day with gains at the end of today's market session. Today brought a welcome turn for the stock market as both the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index showed gains. This positive momentum brought through several days of lingering in negative territory, offering a hopeful outlook for investors. To get the insights of today's market performance, let's connect with Dilushka Diwal joining us from Capital Alliance Securities. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a positive note compared to the previous trading session, brought on by slightly improved sentiment amongst market participants. The market ended at 12,118 points, marking a 42-point increase from the previous session with a turnover of 1.8 billion rupees. The SL20 index also experienced an upward movement of 9.29 points to end the day at 3,575 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors for, with the crossing recorded on Windforce PLC, Sampat Bank PLC, Hemas Holdings PLC. The top five gainers for the day were SMB Leasing vote, Non-Voting, Nation Lanka Finance PLC, Industrial Asphalt PLC, Salon Printers PLC and SMB Leasing Voting. The top five losers for the day were Norelia Hotel Company, Serendip Hotels, Apico Insurance PLC, Columbo Fort Investment PLC and Lake House Printers PLC. The Sri Lankan rupee has shown a depreciating trend against the US dollar since May 2024, continuing to decline by 1.6% in June. However, on a year-to-date basis, the rupee appreciated by 5.6%, closing at 305.8 rupees. Where can we expect Sri Lankan rupee ending up by the end of 2024? To get an analysis, let's connect to Tarusha Ashokar, connecting us from First Capital Holdings. Yes. The Sri Lankan rupee appreciated by 5.6% against the US dollar on a year-to-date basis for the first six months of 2024. This appreciation was driven by continuous dollar purchases by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, which have outpaced dollar sales since September 2023, while in March 2024 alone, CBSL's dollar purchases hit a record high of USD 715 million. However, the rupee experienced depreciation in May and June 2024, 
declining by 1.6% and 1.2% respectively and closed the month of June at 305.7 rupees. The depreciation was largely attributed to slower dollar inflows from tourism and worker remittances compared to the first four months of the year, a seasonal effect due to off-season. Whereas, looking at the external sector performance during the month of May 2024, the trade deficit contracted to USD 393 million, supported by a larger contraction in import expenditure compared to export earnings. However, the balance of payment as of May 2024 narrowed to USD 1.4 billion from USD 1.6 billion in 2023 as the trade deficit expanded to USD, 3, USD 2 billion amidst import relaxation. Looking ahead to the seasonal second half of 2024, heightened tourism activity and an economic rebound are expected to amplify consumer demand for imported goods, potentially widening the trade deficit and further depreciating the LKR. Given the improved economic conditions, First Capital Research forecasts that the LKR will depreciate, targeting a range of 310 to 320 rupee against the US dollar for the latter half of 2024. Gold prices fell slightly in Asian trade today, remaining in a tight trading range as anticipation of a slew of cues on US interest rates kept traders largely averse towards metal markets. Spot gold fell 0.2% to $2,326.47 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in August fell 0.1% to $2,335.80 an ounce. The yellow metal was nursing a fall through June as fears of high US interest rates pushed up the dollar and treasury yield. Gold also remained stuck around $2,300 an ounce. Gold muted with more rate cues on tap and remained range-bound, with focus largely on a slew of cues on interest rates due this week. Crude oil prices today held on to earlier gains made this week that pushed them to the highest in almost two months as fears of a further escalation of violence in the Middle East and expectations of robust demand in the US sparked optimism among traders. Brent crude remained above $86, inching closer to $87 per barrel, while West Texas Intermediate was above $83 per barrel at the time of writing. Yesterday, prices jumped by 2.5%, pushed higher by summer driving season demand expectations. Meanwhile, a hurricane developing over the Atlantic has also helped push oil prices higher. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated slightly against the US dollar today compared to yesterday. Accordingly, the buying rate of the US dollar has reduced from 301 rupees and 37 cents to 300 rupees and 39 cents, while the selling rate has dropped from 310 rupees and 64 cents to 309 rupees and 63 cents. The rupee has also appreciated against a basket of foreign currencies, including Gulf currencies. And let's observe how the rates are now. A short commercial break now, news from the corporate world coming on the other side. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. The Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing is hosting the prestigious Slim National Sales Awards 2024 for the remarkable 24th consecutive year. To date, it is the most celebrated and anticipated event for the Sri Lankan sales professionals and this year's event will be hosted under the theme of Heroes of Excellence. The vision of the Slim National Sales Awards is to recognize sales professionals on par with global standards. Positioned as the best award scheme in South Asian region, 
SLIM aspires to elevate the winners to the global stage. The SLIM National Sales Awards recognize and rewards the performance of sales professionals in over 20 industries. This allows individuals to apply via their companies based on their performance. The categories for the SLIM National Sales Award 2024 are frontliners, sales supervisors, sales executives, territory managers, regional sales managers, national sales managers and other sales support staff. This period of review ranges from the 1st of January 2023 to the 31st of March 2024. As with past editions of this event, this year's event also encourages the participation of female sales personnel as they too will be recognized and appreciated for their efforts for their organizations and industries alike. Each of their aforementioned categories in the competition comes with gold, silver and bronze awards. Additionally, overall awards for national and regional sales managers will be selected regardless of the industry they represent. The panel of judges consists of expert analysts from a multitude of industries and they determine the winners while the head of the judging panel will have the final word in any dispute. Air India, the national carrier of India, yesterday commenced operations of its 787 Boeing Dreamliner to Sri Lanka, marking the first time this aircraft has been used for flights between the two countries. The introduction of the 787 Dreamliner is seen as a significant step in enhancing connectivity and boosting tourism between India and Sri Lanka, promising improved travel experience for passengers. The inaugural flight received a ceremonial water salute upon its arrival at the Bandarnaika International Airport. Currently, Air India operates 10 flights per week on the Colombo Chennai route and 7 flights per week on the Colombo Delhi route. The introduction of the Dreamliner is expected to enhance passenger comfort and experience on these popular routes. In 2023, India was Sri Lanka's largest tourism market, contributing 302,844 tourists which represented 21% of the total arrivals. This trend has continued into 2024, with India maintaining its position as the top source market for tourists to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's tourism industry is rebounding strongly after multiple challenges. Airport and Aviation Services Limited extended congratulations to Air India for this new service addition at BIA and expressed their readiness to facilitate the operations of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Haley's PLC serves as the appointed general sales agent or GSA for Air India in Sri Lanka, supporting the airline's operations and sales. During a meeting with a group of Sri Lankan journalists at the Adani Group's global corporate headquarters in Ahmedabad, Anil Sardana, Managing Director and CEO of Adani Energy Solutions Limited, emphasized Sri Lanka's significant potential in renewable energy. Sardana, who also heads the Sri Lanka Wind Project, highlighted the country's ability to harness solar wind and pumped hydro storage to deliver consistent, traceable green energy 24-7. Sardana's remarks underscore the economic and environmental benefits of investing in renewable energy, presenting a pathway for Sri Lanka to enhance its energy security and economic growth. Speaking to other Therana 24, CEO Anil Sardana stated that Sri Lanka consists of the potential and it can leverage its solar, wind and hydro resources to produce competitive green energy. No, I am saying your country has the potential to have solar, come wind, come pump hydro storage and therefore deliver 24 into 7 traceable green electrons in a very competitive basis. And I think you should make the most and then create byproducts like green hydrogen ethanol and export them so that you can have export surplus and win and earn some royalty for the benefit of people. Thank you. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. Most Asian stocks moved in a tight range today as uncertainty over interest rates, especially before a speech by Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, kept investors on edge. 
China's Shanghai Shenzhen CSI 300 and Shanghai Composite Indices rose slightly today after lodging a mildly positive start to July. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index rose in catch-up trade after a holiday yesterday, adding 1.5% as local heavyweight technology stocks tracked gains in their US peers. Australia's ASX 200 fell 0.4%. Japan's Nikkei 225 rose 0.3%, while the topics added 0.8%. South Korea's Kospi fell 0.6%, even as data showed South Korean consumer price index inflation unexpectedly eased in June. Mega cap growth stocks led by Apple and Tesla lifted the tech-heavy Nasdaq to a higher close, while the Dow and the S&P 500 also eked out slight gains in the light pre-holiday trading. Wall Street's main indexes edged higher on Monday, with the Nasdaq notching the biggest gains thanks to mega-cap tech stocks. The Dow ticked up into the green, the S&P 500 added about a quarter of a percent, and the Nasdaq climbed more than eight-tenths of a percent. Data from the Institute for Supply Management showed manufacturing contracted for a third straight month in June, while prices paid by manufacturers dropped to a six-month low. Both are encouraging signs for the Federal Reserve's battle against inflation. Also scheduled for this week are JOLT's job openings data on Tuesday and the non-farm payrolls report on Friday. Traders have stuck to their bets of around two interest rate cuts from the Fed this year, according to LSEG's FedWatch. Stocks on the move included Apple, which rose nearly 3 percent, while Amazon and Microsoft both added more than 2 percent. Shares of Tesla surged 6 percent ahead of second-quarter vehicle delivery data. J.P. Morgan Chase shares gained more than 1.5 percent to hit an all-time high after the biggest U.S. bank on Friday hiked its dividend and the board authorized $30 billion in share buybacks. And shares of Chewy dropped more than 6.5 percent, reversing sharp early gains after stock influencer Keith Gill also known as Roaring Kitty, disclosed a 6.6 .6 stake in the pet products retailer. Decision Day looms ever closer for British nationals as the UK gears up for the general elections as the reigning Conservatives risk losing their 14-year-long rule against the tax-friendly Labour headed by Keir Starmer. To get an understanding on the economic impacts of the election with specifics on Lankan experts, we have with us Chief of the Derana London Bureau, Nalin Pereira. Nalin? Thank you, Sina. It's another gloomy day in London. The UK general election is days away and the nation prepares to vote. The posters are predicting a landslide victory for the Labour Party. The Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, whose campaign has been marked by mishaps, has urged the voters to support the Conservative Party to avoid a sweeping victory for the Labour Party. While the Reform UK, Greens and Liberal Democrat leaders are seeking to win over the voters who are disillusioned by the two main parties. So in this context, we thought that we will speak to few Sri Lankans who are living in the UK, especially in London, to ask what they are expecting from the next government. On the 4th of July, Britons will head to the polls to choose the next party to lead the country after Prime Minister Rishi Sunak announced snap elections on the 22nd of May. After 14 years of consecutive rule, some major events litter the timeline of the party's governance from the fallout that was Brexit to the woes of the COVID-19 pandemic and more recently the implications of the Russia-Ukraine war. With its economy being on the less than stable footing, polling seems to suggest the collective heads of the nation's voters are being turned in favour of Keir Starmer's Labour Party with predictions that the vote will result in Labour majority. The nightly business report spoke to the Sri Lankans residing in the UK to get a concise understanding of how the upcoming elections impact them on an individual level. The affordability uh, formula of the, the consumer because of the mortgage interest rate and other interest rate have gone up, it has come down quite uh, dramatically. So what happened, in one side the, the, the product prices have gone up, on the other side the affordability of the, the disposable income of the consumer has also badly reduced. For that reason, the economy has, uh, has a severe impact and the, uh, the companies like us and also the more other companies have been severely affected on these policies. I lived in this country for 20, over 20 years. I have two young children who are attending uh, independent, private, uh, independent schooling and the Labour government proposed 20% VAT on school fees will definitely impact me as much as it impacts a lot of Sri Lankans and 
lot of Asian families. So this 20% tax impose will push the parents to withdraw their children from the independent schooling and put more pressure on the already pressurized state schools. The predicament is uh, uh, how, how they are going to raise the taxes or the finances, improve the finances for the, to improve the economy. This is going to be difficult. Even can be a conservative government or the Labour government. For the next 10 years, the people have to basically pay heavy taxes. In what form the taxes will come, you, uh, we don't know. Then the taxation uh, increases in the capital gain sector and also inheritance tax. So there will be a challenging time. How they are going to find the resources to manage the economy is something concerning. It remains to be seen whether the tax-heavy policies of the Labour Manifesto will overpower 14 years of consecutive rule as Prime Minister Rishi Suna continues to attempt defending his title for this election cycle. Well, that's it from us at the Naila Business Report for the day. Tune in again tomorrow for more updates. Until then, I'm Sina Amayadine. Have a good night.